So there are at least uh, four or five uh, things going on in this reading, but I will I'll talk about a few, a couple of them. Jesus goes to the house of Peter. And as he enters the house, Peter's mother-in-law is sick with a fever in a bed. Immediately, Jesus touched her hand. And the fever left her. And she began to serve him. Jesus touched her hand. The fever left her and she began to serve her. What is happening here? Of course, Jesus doesn't speak a word or perhaps he spoke something. But what is recorded is that he touched her hand and the fever left her. There are a few levels of this. Uh, this means that when we are in fear, when we are sick, when we are in pain, Jesus has the ability to touch our infirmity and heal us from those sicknesses. But we have to be willing to follow Jesus first. That's the caveat. Why did Jesus go to this house? Well, he goes to this house because one of his disciples, so he says to Peter, well, let's go to your house so I can see where you live. And as he goes into the house, there was his mother-in-law, perhaps who was not expecting Jesus to come in. But because his son-in-law has offered his life to the service of Jesus, Jesus comes in following Peter into the home. And the healing of this woman is the byproduct of Jesus going into that home. This healing only took place purely because Peter was a disciple. If Peter wasn't a, a disciple, then Jesus could have gone to the house of maybe James or John and the healing could have taken place over there in a different form, perhaps. But here he comes to Peter's house, heals his mother-in-law, and then the woman began to serve him. The woman began to serve Jesus after the healing. So when our life has been transformed by Jesus, when things have been turned around in our lives by Jesus, when Jesus takes away our pain, our struggle, our disease, our sickness, it is then our duty to serve Him. With everything we have, it is our duty to serve Him in holiness and in righteousness. And of course, well, this is a classic example. A woman is sick, Jesus comes in, healed him, she began to serve. But the other classic example is recorded in John's Gospel, chapter 11, I believe, 11 and 12, where Jesus is with his disciples, a message comes in, Lazarus is sick unto death. Jesus said, he totally ignored the message. Then another message comes, well, Lazarus is dead, don't bother, don't come. <laughs> he intentionally stays for two or three more days and then he says to his disciples well he's only sleeping let's just go and wake him up i'm talking about service and serving god so jesus comes to bethany and there is wailing and 
crying and shouting because Lazarus is dead four days. His family members are crying and then met Jesus, Mary and Martha. And they said to him, well, Rabbi, he's dead. If only you had been here, he wouldn't have died. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Whoever believes in me, though he die, will live. Jesus goes to the tomb. You know the story. He shouts on top of his voice, Lazarus, come forth. And him that was dead for four days came out of the grave with grave clothes by his body. And he ordered them, get those things off of him and give him some food. But as he goes into the house, Mary and Martha began to serve Jesus. Why? Because of course, their burden has been lifted. They were preparing to have a funeral. Perhaps that has been taken away. What is there to do? Well, let's serve Jesus. So my dear friends, when we come before God with our woes, our troubles, our crisis, our sickness, our disease, infirmities. Jesus will bring healing. He will always heal us. But after that healing, we shouldn't turn our back on Jesus. We should be humble and serve Jesus. And we do this by serving other people, of course. The Bible says we should love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind and our strength and then serve our neighbors as ourselves. Jesus is not here, but the Bible says, the person that says they love God and does not love their neighbor is a liar. That person is a liar. So you love God by loving your neighbor. The point of call, how people know that you are a Christian, you are a follower of Christ, is that you love your neighbor unconditionally. Matthew puts it very well. He says, pray for those who hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. So people will use you. Not only will they use you, they will despitefully use you. But we pray for them anyway. We love them because they are our neighbors. Because when we do that, there's another verse in Proverbs that says we heap fires of coals on top of their head. So if we are serving them in honesty, in humility, with all our heart, if we are serving our neighbors and all they think about is their selfish gains and we continue to pray for them, we heap fires of coals on top of their head. That's what the Bible says. So my dear friend, when you come to Jesus, he will transform you, no doubt. That, that's just a byproduct of coming to Jesus. Your life will be transformed. But when that happens, serve God. When that happens, serve humanity. And when you do that, you are inadvertently serving God. With your whole heart, in humility, in all honesty, with no hypocrisy, serve people honestly with humility. That's what the gospel is all about. That is what the good news that we have received is all about. Because our lives have been transformed, my life has been transformed, therefore I want to go out and share that good news with the people who are not believers, are unbelievers. So they too can come to Jesus and experience this miraculous power, signs and wonders of healing of their infirmities and diseases. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And we thank you for the transformative power of the resurrection. 
And so we pray that as we have heard your words today, as Jesus brings healing to uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law, we pray that he will also bring healing to our infirm bodies, that he will also bring healing to those things that troubles our mind and heart and deliver us from all unrighteousness. Help us to, do, to be doers of your words and not hearers only so that we can also bring the good news to the children of darkness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.